Hey traders, welcome back to another Sunday video. Hope you're doing well. We are going to be taking a look at a list of currency pairs and a few other select things like gold uh, in this video for the week ahead. We do this every Sunday. I go through the charts, talk about setups. I'm a bit late today, so I apologize for that. Uh, just kind of a crazy weekend. But now taking a look at the charts and I wanted to jump into things with the dollar. So let's take a look at the USD here for this week. And starting out, what you'll notice is this thing is just super bullish right now and we've been talking about the dollar uh and how just you know it's just been on a non-stop bull train for you know the last several several months since uh really the beginning of this trend was i would say right around summer of last year which coming into you know springtime summertime here uh in the uh you know this part of year this is a uh, in, in very interesting thing to watch now the question is is this thing overbought and a lot of people are going to be looking at something like the dollar and they're gonna be saying well, this thing is very due for a pullback. It's very extended. And to some degree, I would actually agree. I think that the dollar has some room to pull back here, but trying to bet on that pullback is something that I personally don't like to do. I'm not a big fan of trying to call tops uh, and call bottoms. I am a trend follower. So for me, uh, my scenario or my approach to this would be if this happens, then we'll look for some potential buys around this area. And that's kind of been my narrative for the last two weeks, really. Uh, you can see these are daily candles, so I've been sort of the same mindset. I have taken some USD trades on the pullback. Uh, I went long around there on the dollar and caught some of that, uh, but I'm actually going into this week flat on USD exposure, at least. I do have a position on gold, which we'll possibly talk about later in this video, but let's actually jump into some individual Euro dollar uh, crosses, for, or the Euro dollar. We'll talk, take a look at some other USD crosses uh, as well. Now, the euro, you can actually see I took a short this past week. I shorted euro and covered in this candle here. Uh, and then, you know, price went crazy towards the end of the week there with everything that had gone on. Um, and now going into this week, I have a couple scenarios for the euro dollar that I want to discuss. So the euro dollar here on the daily chart, we're sitting at support. And unfortunately for the bears, we didn't get a close outside of this range. In fact, we tried to go lower and failed out. So it does look like there may be some short term pullback ideas happening for the euro going into this week and my personal opinion is I think that if we do start to, to start rounding off the bottom here that we could very quickly make a move back on up to 1.10 in which case that may be an area for me to look for more short side action and go with the trend here if we actually drop it down to a four hour chart we get a better view of price and you can kind of see this idea here so if I go from the swing high of this move bring this fib all the way down and line this up that 50% level kind of sticks out to me where we have past support potentially could become resistance going into this week. If that happens, we'll look for potential shorts to continue this downward trend. That would be my opinion, my approach on Euro dollar. Now, why am I short bias in the Euro outside of just a downward trend? There's something more to it, so let me go ahead and show you that right now. Here's the A1 Edge Finder. This is a tool that our team here at A1 Trading has built. Um, this has been a work in progress and we have officially uh, had this out for just about one week. We have been loving uh, the, the feedback we've gotten from people who already have this tool. So I'll just show you guys real quick. We'll give an example. We'll take a look at the Euro dollar. So you can see the Euro dollar is the short, uh, the, the strongest sell signal on the list right now. And this has been saying this for the last week or so, but let's go take a look at the Euro. We'll pull up the Euro dollar, take a view here. By the way, uh, for those of you guys who are uh, already own, you already own a copy of the A1 Edge Finder, check out the new seasonality chart. We actually fixed this, made it look a lot cleaner. Um, and what this does, seasonality will tell you historically year over year uh, for the last all time average, last five years, what each market has done this month. So for example, we're looking at April. April for uh, for the euro dollar is not an extreme month. But say, for example, you know, the month of July is historically a very positive month for the euro against the dollar. Uh, same with August. So knowing these trends can be helpful. And there's a whole bunch of stuff that this thing does. By the way, we are raising the prices on this thing tomorrow. We've been developing this and we've done an early access thing. Today is the last uh, full day to get early access to the A1 Edge Finder. There will be a link down below in the description if you'd like to get a copy of this. But again, like I said, the price is going up. We talked about that all last week. Um, we, we released it for a cheaper price than usual this first week to get a people a chance to try it out, to jump in and help us get some feedback. We are getting to the point where we're going to raise the price and um, 
Yeah, that's happening soon. So take advantage. The link is down below in the description. Anyways, Euro dollar, strong sell signal here on the software. And the reasoning here uh, is COT data, very negative. So if we take a look at the COTs, USD, strong bullish bias from institutional traders. How do we know this? Well, the COT commitment of traders report is something that tells us the holdings of major players in the markets. And so we know that the dollar is very long biased. The euro on uh, respect to that is actually sort of mixed, 50-50 almost. So if anything, the dollar's strong, which is a big signal to us to potentially short the euro and be a favor, uh, be favoring the dollar in this case. So that gets us a negative score in that category. Interest rate divergence, there is more of an attractive interest rate in the US than there is in Europe. That is a bias towards shorting the euro, buying the dollar. Retail sentiment is negative, uh, a negative one score. And this is why retail traders are buying euro dollar. And so we want to avoid this and potentially look more to be on the short side. So I like to be on the minority of this category. So we get a negative one in that category. Seasonality this month historically is basically flat, but slightly negative. So we get a negative in that category. And finally, we have a strong downward trend. Overall prints a strong sell signal. That's why last week I took a trade on the euro dollar. It went really well. We shorted here, covered here. So again, I'm looking for an opportunity to short this thing. Should we see a pullback on the technicals? The edge finder has a nice sell signal on it as well. So that's just extra confirmation for me to look for a sell trade. And uh, we'll go from there. So that's the first one. We'll take a look. Uh, you know, we're actually going to guide ourselves a little bit with the edge finder today. I want to look at the uh, most interesting things. I'll talk to you guys about my gold position. So here's a strong buy reading. I actually took a buy trade on gold. You're not going to be able to see it because I don't trade gold on my broker here in the US. We aren't actually able to trade XAU USD on US regulated brokers. So um, my gold position is actually on the stock market, which is a bit interesting. It's the same thing. It's just an ETF form of buying gold. Um, so anyways, I bought gold last week in this pullback area. So uh, roughly around here. And my concept with this is that, okay, gold, strong buy. Let's go look at gold on the edge finder in just a second. But before we do, target wise, I think that the gold market has a lot of potential to retrace to the top of this move. But really, the question is, can we start getting a breakout towards some levels like 2000 and beyond 2050? Big psychological levels there, 2000, 2050. Um, we had a strong buy candle there midweek. Uh, so that could be potentially interesting going into, um, you know, this week, if we get some follow through on that. We've had some nice higher lows. This thing seems to be strong. And uh, we'll see if we can get a bit more of a bust to the upside there. Let's go take a look at the edge finder, see what we have for gold here today. So gold, retail traders are net short. Retail traders shorting gold. That tells me I want to be buying. There we go right there in that category. Seasonality this month historically tends to be strong for April or strong for gold. Um, seasonality gets plus one. Trend reading, strong trend. That's an easy plus two. Overall, we get a score of four. Strong buy reading on the edge finder. And so that is my confirmation that I will be looking for buy trades. So when I go back over here, that's what I did this week. I ended up taking a buy in this candle there beautifully uh, went back up into the, the right direction. And so now the question is, can we get a break back to the upside? And from there, a move beyond to resistance on up at 2000. So my thought process is this pullback area is a buy um, until further notice. We'll see if I'm correct about that. My stop is below structure in case I am incorrect about that. Okay, next on the list, we'll take a look at the market summary tab. And uh, and you can see I'm probably not going to spend much time talking about pairs in the middle here because they're sort of neutral. And this is for me not I, I want that edge. I want that, you know, tell me a lot of uh, factors that are going to basically give me a direction and then go with that. Um, so for me, I'm looking at things like the extreme sells, extreme buys. Now, dollar yen, euro yen, pound yen. Let's do a little jump on each one of those first. We'll take a look at dollar yen, which is the strongest buy reading on the thing. It has a plus on every single category, which is uh, you know crazy. So really strong upward trend. We'll start right to left actually. Seasonality this month tends to be strong for April. You can actually see this month in gray is like rocket, you know, the, the seasonality caught this beautifully. Um, this past two months were called bullish. And of course, dollar yen is flying high. So doing what historically we would expect for it to do in April. So get a positive category in seasonality, retail sentiment, traders are shorting this thing like crazy. So we are looking to be more on the long side, interest rate divergence, we have a plus 0.6 bias uh, towards USD. So we're looking to be buying the dollar selling the yen. 
COT data, this is huge. J Japanese yen, very short by institutional traders. USD, very long by institutional traders. So we get two, we get plus and plus for buying the dollar, shorting the yen. So the problem is the dollar yen has been on an absolute tear to the upside. So how do we get involved with something like this? Well, for me, this would have to be waiting for a pullback. And, um, you know, that's the thing is, is this has been a bit of a patient man's game because the dollar yen has just done nothing but up, up, up and away. So you can see that the market definitely agrees with the edge finder here, right? The edge finder saying strong buy. Well, strong buy has been going on for weeks now and it's just gone and gone and gone. So Beautiful trade there. If you were, if you've been long on the dollar yen, it's been hard to mess this up. It's been really, really bullish. So for me, how do you buy something like this? Well, I can't buy it up here. I've got to see a pullback. Very, even if I'm aggressively wanting to buy the dollar yen, I've got to see something like a pullback to this area. So maybe if we get a move back down to like 124.5 this week, if we see a sell off on the uh, dollar yen. That could potentially be an area to look for uh, to buy into that weakness. Uh, but again, it would be a bit aggressive. But the thing is, when I look at the edge finder and I say, okay, all these factors are very strong, it's not a guarantee. There's never a guarantee in markets, but it's a strong chance that we could see some strength come in for the dollar yen if we do get a dip on the price. Um, another thing, we could look at GDP comparison between these, and you could see Japan making some growth, but not nearly as much as the U.S. Strong GDP growth. Unemployment, uh, unemployment in the U.S. is 3.6. In Japan, it's 2.7. They have a very historically low uh, unemployment rate, which is... Um, Definitely one of the reasons why Japan has, it's kind of that safe haven currency. People tend to buy it when things get scary. But right now, there's a nice appetite for risk in markets, um, which we also see in the U.S. 10-year, right? Uh, generally speaking, this thing dr uh, driving higher is a positive sentiment towards risk in markets. People are more um, you know, positive about market outlook. But anyways, we also talked about GBP JPY. So this week, again, we I, I took buy trades on this thing recently. You can see where I bought, closed out. Obviously, in hindsight, I should have just held it because I would have been up in way more money. I think I made some good money on this. What was that? Um, 61,000 units. Yeah, I'm kicking myself now. Shoulda, coulda, woulda held on to this thing the whole time. I'd be up nicely. But this is trading. So, of course, we've got to be, uh, you know, live in the moment. You can't live in the past. So um, for the dollar yen... We've got some ideas, possible pullbacks like this area. If you're very aggressive, perhaps you're looking at this zone. Um, you can actually see this thing happened so quick. Went bam, bam, touched that area just for a second before riding higher. So if I'm looking at, if, uh, if pound yen is on my watch list, um, I would really start to only be interested if I start, started to see like a 38.2% retracement off of this move, which we could actually line up if we'd like. Let's take this to here, and you can kind of see it lines up beautifully. 163, right there on the dot, just about uh, pullback zone to the 38.2 and a level of support. So if we do get some yen strength this week, I'd be very interested. Actually, I'm kind of hoping that that happens. I'd love a pullback on the yen so that I can look to uh, get in on some of these trades. So we'll, we'll watch on uh, on pound yen here that this week. So that's definitely another positive one. If we take a look at the edge finder real quick, go to GJ, you can see that Pound yen, very strong overall um, sentiment here. So traders shorting the heck out of this thing. So we're more interested in wanting to go long against them. Um, interest rate divergence. There's definitely a bias towards GBP as they do have a much higher interest rate than Japan. Um, seasonality, this month historically positive for uh, April for, for the pound yen. So putting all that together, we get a strong buy reading. But again, we're looking for a pullback. Euro yen, same kind of concept, almost uh, the exact idea. Strong across the board, really, really strong buy signal on Euro yen if we see, again, a pullback. So we're sitting at resistance. If this thing does uh, break out, maybe we could talk about like a momentum push, something like this, break, retest, continuation. That's something to think about. So I think that there's a lot of opportunity with these yen pairs. We just have to be a bit patient, patient to actually get the entries that we're looking for. Um, but... Yeah, so euro yen, dollar yen, pound yen, those are all three kind of interesting on the on the watch list, but I'd like to see some action on that before I can jump in. I'd like to see a pullback on some of those plays. Market summary again, another one to take a look at is Aussie dollar. By the way, you guys, one more thing I should say about the edge finder is we are raising prices, but we're going to be raising prices again a final time there um, when we release the full number of assets. So right now we have 10. But there's like plus 20 more coming. 
I think there might be even more than 20 coming. We have like the crosses, right? Euro pound. And eventually we'll add things probably like NASDAQ and, uh, you know, silver. We're going to add so many things to this. So over time, you're going to get a reading on all major assets. It's going to be amazing. We are so excited for it. But again, that's why we have the price lower than usual. It is a one-time fee. The link is down below in the description. Like I said, if you want this thing, get it now before the price goes up because it is actually going to go up. We are raising the price on Monday. We've already got it scheduled to, to go up. And the reason for that is, again, this was early access week. So you got it for a cheaper price if you did want it. And um, like I said, it's it's going up because we're spending a lot of money developing this. We've got to have people working on it and you know helping out with the people who have questions about it and all that sort of stuff. So get it while you can for the cheaper price. Anyways, um, taking a look at things like Aussie dollar, let's take a look at this one. We'll take a look at AUD USD for a moment. So this one has a sell signal. And um, if I look at this four hour chart, if I'm looking at this going into this week, I'm looking at areas like this. If we can get pullbacks to those areas, I think that there's potential for some nice trading opportunities. So let's go ahead and do this. Bam, bam, bam. So yeah, maybe maybe an aggressive uh, or maybe a conservative entry would be waiting for somewhere like this with that 38.2 just above that kind of gives you a nice little uh, line of defense for sellers. And uh, let's go take a look at on the edge finder why this uh, is interesting to us. Let's see. Seasonality will start here. Uh, the month of April tends to be positive. So we get a positive reading there. So that's a one positive thing. That's why this thing doesn't have an even lower score. COT data, Aussie is being sold by institutional traders. USD is being bought. Um, retail sentiment, traders are long on this pair, whereas we want to probably be dodging that a little bit. And uh, we do get a retail sentiment, by the way. I think it's, it's let me check the score. Uh, let's go here, helped. Retail sentiment, 60% or more. So this, guys, take a look at this. Um, so ret if retail traders are 60% long or more, then this is a bearish signal, and this metric receives a score of negative 1. If retail traders are 40% long or less, then this is a bullish signal in a market. Okay, so you get the point. This is just about a, a negative 1 score because we almost have 60%. If this was 60%, this would be a negative one score. So we basically have a negative five here, which is to me, this is a strong sell signal overall. I mean, it is already, but um, you get the point. So this thing is targeting. It gave us a couple target ideas, uh, basically just continued extensions lower. And what this does is it does standard deviations from price and extends it by one, two, and three standard deviations for the last 20 days. I know that's a lot, but it could be a helpful metric just to get an idea of, you know, an, a, a strong, a really crazy move lower would probably hit target three. Uh, a moderately strong move lower probably hit target two. And a probably reasonable short, uh, short term move lower would hit at 7420, uh, 7429, sorry. And let's go take a look at where 7429 is. Well, we already hit it. <laughs> so we actually, um, what this does, it's saying we've already made a, a portion, 7429 is right around here. So we actually hit that on Friday, um, which is awesome. So this, this signal already tagged that first level. Uh, the next levels would be, let's go back to the targets for a second, 7379, right around the low, just beyond, uh, right around the low there. And then the more extreme reading would be a 73.295, uh, right around here. So you kind of get an idea of where this thing is. Is Short term, it's saying we have potential to make a move like right around there. So we'll see. Just an idea um, for you. And, and that would make complete sense. If this thing breaks out of this, of this low from last week, we probably see that right? That would be a pretty strong uh, catalyst to move down to that level. We did close very bearish last week. That candle does not look like it's messing around. We have several, you know, uh, very weak green candles here before more selling came in. So for me, looking at Aussie dollar, this one is definitely bullish, sorry, bearish. Um, and again, I'm looking to see if I can get a pullback here, continuation or break and continuation, right? Retests either way. But you know, I, I the thing is, sometimes we'll get an idea like this, let's say a bullish signal here. I will either buy back here on a pullback, if, especially if it has like resistance, past resistance, turn support, uh, or if this never happens, right, where we never get the pullback, like if we, if we, 
make a new break, right? Then there's another opportunity to buy a pullback. So that's the thing about pullbacks. Sometimes you don't get the pullback, but you can always wait for a new break and a new retest to occur. So if this happens where it breaks without ever pulling back to this level again, right, we could still look for a potential continuation idea. So I'll be looking at that on Aussie dollar this week. It is high up on the list on the, uh, or I guess low on the list for sell signals on the edge finder. And I've been using this thing basically exclusively to help me find my setups. Um, the reasoning for it is because it takes a number of factors that I find very valuable in my trading, um, what the retail traders are doing, what smart money or institutional traders are doing, what their positions look like, um, interest rate divergence. It takes a, a bunch of factors into account and then makes a decision as to how strong uh, of a recommendation it is. Now, of course, please remember this is not like, a, oh, it's a guarantee because this is a strong buy, it's gonna keep going. Um, it's just a metric calculator. It basically takes all these metrics, shows you the strongest and weakest based on the metrics and gives you ideas. Then you have to kind of go take that as, those ideas and look for entries, right? So my technicals are still something separate from the edge finder. The edge finder is not really a technical thing. It's mostly a sentiment and fundamentals calculator, which is why it's been really popular so far. Again, one more time before the end, uh, end of the video, make sure to subscribe uh, to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. And if you want a copy of the Edge Finder, it is cheap uh, compared to where the price is going. It is actually going up. Again, this thing costs a lot of money to develop and to maintain um, on our end. So we are raising the prices soon. So get that chance to get it for a cheaper price this week. And uh, with that said, thank you very much for watching, guys. Happy trading and have a great week.